I'm Alan Ashurst, illegal dumping investigator with the City of Kansas City, Missouri, and welcome to the Weekly Report. Illegal dumping is more than a problem of just making a neighborhood look bad. Residents have told us that they wanted more attention paid to this problem, so the city hired four additional investigators and installed cameras in problem areas. Illegal dumping is a crime, but thanks to neighborhoods who have worked closely with the city, illegal dumping has been reduced. For example, we host neighborhood cleanup events like the one we held last week to provide opportunities for neighborhoods to work with the city to dispose of their items. My name is Esther Kershaw, president of Boston Heights and Mount Hope Neighborhood Association. Uh, and this is our neighborhood cleanup day where the residents can bring whatever they want to uh, get rid of for the cleanup. This helps reduce illegal dumping. And this is one way to keep the east side looking great. Hi, my name is Floyd Taylor. Uh, I'm with the Solid Waste Division. And uh, we're here at the Boston Heights and uh, Manor uh, Cleanup. We do it in different uh, neighborhood associations uh, all year long. And what we do is we're stationary at our trucks and people bring their appliances, uh, leaf and brush, uh, any, anything that they want thrown away except for paint and uh, tires and batteries. But basically anything you can put in a pickup and bring and, and we'll collect it. And uh, it's a good service for the city. The city offers you many ways of getting rid of your trash with curbside pickup, free recycling, and with appointment bulk item pickup. For more information about what's allowed with your curbside pickup, go to kcmo.gov slash trash. The city also has three recycling drop-off centers. Pleasant Valley Park at 6401 Northeast Pleasant Valley Road, KCATA Park and Ride at 5200 East Redbridge Road, or the KCMO Environmental Campus at 4707 Doremus. The Environmental Campus is also home to the city's household hazardous waste facility. Residents can dispose of paint, unused lawn and garden chemicals, or other household chemicals safely at the HHW. Never dispose of these items in your curbside trash. Go to kcmo.gov for more info. The annual PIAC district meetings are being held right now across the city. Please join us from 6 to 8 p.m. on Thursday, September 5th at the Greg Kleiss Community Center, 1600 East 17th Terrace. Tuesday, September 10th at the South Patrol Police Station at 9701 Marion Park Drive. Thursday, September 12th at the Kansas City United Church of Christ at 205 West 65th Street. And Tuesday, September 17th at the Shoal Creek Patrol Station at 6801 Northeast Pleasant Valley Road. For more information on the PIAC program and the complete list of meeting dates, go to kcmo.gov slash PIAC. Yeah, there's been degrees. Yeah, right? but you know, it just kind of goes with it. And just how the tree was right in the shadow. I would have to do a lot more detail on the buildings, and I don't really want to do that. I want them to just kind of fade away, so. The annual Brush Creek Plain Air Art Walk is back September 13th to the 15th. This annual outdoor painting competition is held along all four miles of Kansas City's picturesque Country Club Plaza. Are you an artist and like to paint in the great outdoors? This quick paint event features more than $2,000 in cash awards. Winners will be displayed beginning October 1st at the Anita Gorman Discovery Center. If you're not a painter, come enjoy the great outdoors and interact with some of the artists. You may want to purchase one of these many paintings for yourself. Find out more at kcparks.org. Thanks for watching the Weekly Report. I'm Alan Ashers with Solid Waste, and stay tuned for more great city videos. And if you're talking trash, just make sure it's legal. Have you been a victim of discrimination? The Kansas City Civil Rights Division may be able to investigate your complaint. All citizens are protected against discrimination in employment and public accommodations on the basis of your race, 
national origin, sex, religion, disability, and other protected categories. Before you contact us, first consider the following. Your employer or the business establishment you are filing against must reside within the city limits of Kansas City, Missouri. Your employer must have six or more employees. The act of discrimination must have occurred within the last 180 days. And even if you're under the age of 18, a parent or guardian can still file on your behalf. If your complaint meets these criteria, you have the right to report it. Call the Kansas City Human Relations Department or visit our website, kcmo.gov slash human relations slash civil rights. The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department has gone to the dogs. Sergeant Jake Bikina says it's a partnership with KC Pet Project to find some furry animals a forever home. So this is our second dog that we have fostered for a day with the KC Pet Project in their daily foster program. Uh, we called it Paw Patrol, P-A-W, Police and Woofs. So it's been a fun uh, little project that we've taken on with them. Um, we had this thought and we reached out to them uh, and their foster coordinator and you know it helps them because they have so many dogs and they need you know some time away because they're you know in the shelter pretty regular and so they get walked every day but this gives them an opportunity to get out and you know see the world for a day also you know we take them to different police facilities and we interact with our members and who doesn't love a dog that shows up to work you know so uh, they get lots of pets and lots of exposure and we chronicle it on our social media so it gives us some good exposure too it's a good partnership with another city entity and um, hopefully it results in uh, the dog being adopted. Cammie enjoyed the spotlight as she sauntered into classrooms at the Regional Police Training Academy, putting her best foot forward in hopes of finding a new owner among KCPD's finest. Bikina says she will need some special attention. One for one so far in getting uh, getting dogs adopted. The last dog we did uh, took her about five days, but she got adopted. She was a real similar situation. She was eight years old and had to be the only pet, just the same as Cammy. Campari is her full name. We call her Cammy. Uh, she is almost eight years old and she needs to be the only pet uh, based on her, um, her activity. If you are interested in Cami or any other animal from the KC Pet Project, go to kcpetproject.org. Hispanic Heritage Month is coming up and Fiesta Hispana is one of the longest running festivals here in Kansas City that celebrates the Latino culture and the contributions of the Latino community. Here to tell us more about this festival that happens here at Barney Alice Plaza is David Tinoco. David, thank you for coming out to the plaza. Thank you, Consuelo. And you've been involved pretty early on in the 80s when the festival started. Can you tell us a little bit about the inception and what your role is with Fiesta Hispana? Currently, I'm the president of the Greater Kansas City National Hispanic Heritage Committee. We host the Fiesta Hispana. Been president for close to 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, been an annual event here at Barney Alice for over 35 years. Currently started in 81, 1981 as a parade from Kansas, uh, Armadale to Kansas City. Uh, in 82, we were a fiesta uh, parade down in the uh, Southwest Boulevard area. And then in 83, we moved it here at Barney Alice. And this is our home since then. Wow, and what was the impetus for the festival starting? Uh, to acknowledge the, uh, the, the, the commitment and the uh, Hispanic heritage, uh, the culture, uh, everything that we have to offer from dance, education, to, um, uh, you know, performances, great food. Yes. Uh, you know, and acknowledge that uh, for our community and bringing it to light to the Kansas City market. So actually, the festival has been a bridge for, for the Kansas and the Missouri side. Yes. So um, speaking of which, you have attendees that come every year, but you also have attendees that come from all over. Can you talk to us about 
where they come from and how many you're anticipating this year. This year we're currently anticipating over 30,000 people for the event. A uh, great partnership with the Marriott Hotel. Uh, we have uh, blocked rooms for that. So with that we have at this current time really have exceeded the amount that we have blocked and it's the festival still a couple weeks away. Uh, so we have people from all over from Wichita, uh, California coming in. We have vendors in from San Antonio coming, uh, Des Moines, Omaha, St. Louis and the surrounding area. So being that it's been an event that's an annual event for 37 years plus, people uh, look forward to this every year. It kicks off Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, so they look forward to it and, and a lot of kids have grown up you know, with their parents coming here as an event, very family oriented uh, an event, uh, and they bring their, their family and their kids and stuff like that. So we're anticipating a lot of people from, you know, both sides of the state line plus other states also. So you've got multiple generations that are coming yes. and have come over the years. What, if someone's new and isn't necessarily from that multi generational group, what can they expect when they come? Well, one, it's free to come in, which is nice. Yes. You know, uh, what you can look for is that it's a family oriented uh, uh, event, it's a festival that uh, exposes all the Latinos, not just the Mexicans, but all of them Peruvian, Colombian, you know, uh, uh, Ecuadorian, all of those. We have entertainment from noon to midnight. Uh, we have vendors that, uh, that will show their, their, their crafts, uh, employment opportunities, uh, food, uh, you know, beverages of, of, of their culture. So it's a, it's a wide open festival that, you know, you can find something. There's something for the kids. We have a carnival area. Uh, Kansas City Police Department is going to have D.A.R.E. car here this year. So we'll have that. So we, we reach out to all avenues of it. So it's really, we, we gear on the family aspect of it to showcase uh, the dance groups, the color, the pageantry, uh, the professionalism. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, Grammy Award winning performers coming in. On Friday night, we have mm -hmm. a group from Mexico coming called Canetes de Linares from Linares, Mexico. Mm -hmm. On Saturday, we have two performers. We have two Grammy Award winners. Uh, one is Little Joe uh, y La Familia, and he's a, a legend of the Holland music been around forever. Uh, he's been doing it a long time, so we want to make sure we had him. He's never performed in Kansas City at this event. We have uh, Grammy Award winner Rick Fuentes with the Brown Express, was the uh, uh, producer and, and arranger for Ruben Ramos. Mm. So we have two Grammy Award winning performers coming in Saturday night. And on Sunday, we have from uh, the state of Cuihuala, Mexico, we have a, a group of Masore. Uh, they're coming in on Saturday at the headlight. And also Saturday, before that, we're doing the El Grito, uh, which is combinated together uh, with that event. So a very pageantry, uh, very friendly, family-oriented, and uh, a festive event. For more information about Fiesta Hispana, where's the best place to go? Well, our webpage is kcfiestahispana.com and our Facebook page. Great. Well, thank you so much for talking to us about Fiesta Hispana, and we're looking forward to it. Well, thank you very much. The Neighborhood Tourist Development Fund supports local nonprofits that bring cultural, social, educational, and recreational activities to our area.
To learn about additional upcoming events, visit kcmo.gov ntdf.